Right. Last class we were using this uh, for six and eight routers to understand how MPLS, VRF, BGP all works together to provide us a VPN, a layer three VPN between provider edge to provider edge connecting multiple customers. We were we were able to ping from customer A1 to A2 and likewise B1 to B2. Having same network on both the customers, we were not seeing any conflict. The reason is we were having VRF here, which keeps the routing entries separate for each customer. And we saw about route distinguisher, we saw about route targets. This route distinguisher and route targets are uh, sent along with the update. The route distinguisher is to distinguish and say from where the update is originating. Route target is helping us to download an update from the VPN tunnel. So it's it's the we also saw that you know the route distinguisher and route target values are 64 bits and route distinguishers are prepended to our update say for example if uh, let me take the snapshot of this and use the topology All right, so we were seeing like um, here, the PE router has got two route distinguisher. This let's say one colon one and one co two colon two, things like that. Now, when any update comes from this customer, it is prepended with this number. So when we see the when we see the routes in BGP, when we see the update in BGP, MP, BGP, VPN tunnel, the updates that is coming from customer A1 looks like this, 1 colon 1, 172.16.0.0. Same, same subnet is also there with CB1, when that update comes inside VPN, it looks like this 2 colon 2, 172.16.0.0. So this is not same. Only when you see this 32 bit, it looks same. But because it is prepended with 64 bit of value, it becomes different inside the VPN. It looks different. They are, they are identified as two different network. So route distinguisher helps us to distinguish these updates in the VPN tunnel. Not only that, it also says from where the update is coming. So one colon one is the one colon one is the route distinguisher value that we have given for this customer CA1. So uh, you know we can easily say from where the updates are coming it shows the origin from where from which customer this update is received that's the purpose of route distinguisher whereas route target is not like that route target that is also a attribute that is added to your update route tar the target values are also an extended community values that are sent along with the update it is like a tag that you send say for example you export with a value uh, let's say you export as 11 colon 11 this is the export value so that is also sent along with this update as 11 colon 11 here this update you you export it with 22 colon 22 
So this will be exported as 22 colon 22. Now whoever wants to, whoever, whoever he may be, he may be a customer A or he may be customer B. If he needs an update from CA1, he will use the import command and this number. See, CA is sending this update. But CB wants it. Is that possible? Yes, it is possible. All that he needs to do is, all that the provider edge 2 needs to do is, it needs to import 11 colon 11. So CB2 can receive update from CA1. If there is any need, this is also possible. So what we understand here is, route distinguishers are not going to stop someone downloading on CB2. Though it is coming from CA1, route distinguisher cannot stop if the VRF CB2 has got 11 colon 11 as import. So it is the import and export tagging that that makes the customer whether they can receive or not to receive the update. So the the receiving update and not receiving update depends on the import and export values that we use. And then we also saw uh, that you know we run MPLS here inside the core. Now all these work together for us you know, to communicate between left hand side to the right hand side. So let us start from the core first. Core has got MPLS. Let us see how MPLS works and why do we need MPLS. So I have taken a fresh page now. And I am going back to the topology. This is the topology. Let me also open the CLIs. Command line interface for every router is ready. Our focus is only on MPLS. Now, what do you mean by what do we what do we get out of MPLS, or what what MPLS provides us, or what we mean when we say MPLS? MPLS means multi protocol label switching. Multi protocol label switching. The reason why we we have this is to label the routes. Label each and every route that is present in the Ceph table. It provides a label. Why we need label? When we have label, it helps to identify a network very easily. Instead of seeing, you know, instead of seeing too many parameters, we just see the label. You know, whenever I travel, I, I have a special tag on my luggage. <clears throat> most, most, most of the people have, you know, similar boxes, similar luggage box, baggage. So when it comes inside, you know, when it, when it comes in the, in the, what to say, in the belt, when it comes around in the belt, a lot of suitcases, you know, they look alike. They look like ours. So if I if I have a label, I can easily identify that this is not mine and this is mine. You now, if, if if that doesn't that doesn't have a label, then it's not mine. I no need to really see the tag on it. Uh, I I no need to see whether you know it's really mine. Uh, I no need to open and see whether this 
this box is mine. If I have a label on it, I can easily say that that suitcase is mine that coming in the belt. So I no need to you know bother others by taking their their property, their box. The same way, you know, others will not take my box because it has got some special label on it. So it 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 helps to quickly identify our device, our 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 box, our baggage, label. Same way. To identify a packet from where it is coming and where it goes, we use simple labels so that we need not to look into layer 3 parameters like subnet masks, host, network portion, all the stuff. All layer 3 parameters we need not to look into because we have a simple identification called label. So labels are simple identifications which helps to do the route lookup faster. So forwarding decisions are made very fast because you don't see too many parameters on each and every packet. You see only label based on the label you push the packet. Based on the label, we decide the exit interface. The router decides the exit interface. So the job of MPLS is to provide labels to every route that is seen in the Ceph table, in the forwarding information base, FIB table. That route, you know, some routes may be given by EIGRP, some routes might have been given by OSPF, some may be from RIP, some may be static, whatever the source may be, multi-protocol, whatever the protocol that provides the route, label is going to be given by this protocol. So the routes may be learned through OSPF, EIGRP, RIP static route, anything it may be, all gets a label from MPLS. And this label is actually 20 bit length, 20 bit length. This label is 20 bit, bit length. For MPLS, total number of bits used is 32 bit. In that, 20 bit is for label, for label, 20 bit is for label. And 3 bit, 3 bits are for COS or traffic engineering or quality of service or traffic engineering yeah, these are the two main purpose we use for QoS or for uh, traffic engineering. And then we got one bit to mark bottom of a stack. And then we got 8 bit for TTL. So totally we got 32 bits. Total number is 32 bit. So what's the size of the, the length of the label? It is 20. What's the total size of MPLS bits? It's 32. Out of 32, 20 is used for label. 3 is for uh, traffic engineering or for quality of service. It is also called as experimental bit. Initially, they named it as experimental bit. Now, we just no more in experimental. We use for traffic engineering and we use for COS marking. And we got one bit to identify whether this is the last label or we got some more labels to look up. It's what called as bottom of a stack means we may have more than one label. 
I would like to show you that. I'll quickly sniff a packet that is going between this two router and show you that in some circumstances we will have more than one label. So we will have more than one label when we have VPN, when we have traffic engineering along with MPLS. And because we configured VPN in the last class, we will have one label for VPN identification, another label for moving the packet uh, between the devices. So now I'd like to pick, okay, this one. You see, I have only one label. There is only one MPLS and there is only one label. Now what I'll do is I'll ping now. I'll ping from CB1 to CB2. CB1 show IP route. Oh, I don't see a route from CB2. Show IP route. Even now here I don't see. So something is wrong with the VPN. Let's try to fix it. I didn't save the configuration it seems this is last time. Show IP BGP VPN V4 Unique VPN V4 VRF all. Or all. I am seeing some update. Okay, I'm seeing one nine one one nine. Okay, I'm I'm seeing the route that is coming from CB one. The route is coming from CB one. I can see that in the VPN. Let me check the same thing on PE two. I'll put the same command. All right, here, good news is uh, I'm seeing the routes coming from same CB1, but we are not seeing route uh, from CB2. From CB2, there is no route coming inside, so I need to check whether this guy is learning show IP route VRF CB I am seeing from CB1 but I'm not seeing from CB2 which means CB2 is not advertising I'd like to check whether these two are neighbor so let us go to CB2 and check the neighbor show IP EIGRP neighbor and that's the problem so we don't have neighborship with PE2 let's fix it show IP EIGRP interfaces we are running EIGRP in the interface so the problem is on the PE2 PE side on the PE2 show IP EIGRP for VRF CB CB interfaces okay you know the router ID problem <coughs> so what I need to do is I need to give a router ID manually so let me go to EIGRP and give the router ID manually and the EIGRP name is my EIGRP so I'll say router, yeah, router EIGRP, my EIGRP. And then I'll say address family, address family, IPv4 for VRF CB, autonomous system number is 11, 
EIGRP router ID. I'll give some router ID. All right. If you have some uh, IPv4 address, it will pick automatically if you have any Lubeck interface. But because I don't have any Lubeck interface in this VRF CB, it couldn't pick. Now let us check whether our EIGRP. Yeah, now I don't see the problem. What problem? I don't see the problem because of router ID. But I don't see interface running EIGRP. So what I'll do again, I'll go to EIGRP again. I'll get into the address family and say network 199.2.2.0. Now I'm expecting a neighbor. Yes. So we got neighbor relationship. All right. Now I would like to go here and see anything new coming in. Okay, I'm seeing some EIGRP hellos. I'm seeing some updates. They're all EIGRP hellos, but I'm unable to see any layer three packets with the uh, MPLS label encapsulation. So what I'll do is I'll I'll ping from CB2 to CB1. Show IP route. Yeah. Now I'm 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 seeing the route coming from CB1. So if I ping from here, the ping should happen. Yeah, it's happening. Now I'll go and Pick that packet. Okay, look at this echo packet. Wow, this is what I want to show you. I can show you. I, I, I'm seeing here two labels. You are seeing two labels here MPLS, MPLS. So, what is the difference between this? If you see the bottom of a stack, bottom of a stack is zero here, and here the bottom of a stack is one. What it means is this is the last label. This is second last label. So when a packet comes to a router, it will look into the top layer, top label, and root the packet. Root the packet based on the label. And if it finds the label with the bottom of a stack one, with the bottom of a stack one, then it understands that this is the last label. And there is no more label. If I need to again do routing, if there is no label for exit interface, then it will do normal routing. So, you know, you, you have more than one label when we have VPN. Let me repeat again. In order to move the packet between this router, it uses one label, which is top label. In order to identify the VPN tunnel, MPLS tunnel, it uses another label, the bottom label. The top label and bottom label is added on the ingress router, PE1. The top label will get swapped, will, will be keep on changing. The top label top label will be keep on changing during you know during the forwarding in, in, in the transit, during the transit on every router. The bottom label will be removed only after reaching the another end of the VPN tunnel. So the bottom label is to identify the final tunnel exit router, whereas the top layer is to move the packet inside the MPLS core. So you need you need some identification to say whether it's a lost label or not. For that we have, we use one bit. If that bit is zero, then this is not a last label. If the bit is one, then this is the last label. And you know, it also have TTL, good news. I'm sorry, it's opposite, good news. Why it is good news? TTL is a layer 3 
uh, loop prevention mechanism. We all know that it's a layer three loop prevention mechanism. Mm. In case if loop occurs, it won't go more than 255 hops. So for that, how many bits needed? Eight bits are needed to mark that TTL value. For every jump, the TTL gets decremented. 255 hops. Now, because this MPLS is preventing the router from seeing layer 3 information, the TTL value cannot be seen. So you cannot prevent loop. Why? TTL works, operates in layer 3. It's in layer 3. But because you enabled MPLS, you are not going to look into layer 3 information which means you are not going to look into TTL. If you are not going to look into TTL, then you are, you are neglecting the loop prevention mechanism. You are ignoring very important mechanism which is preventing loop. So in order to consider TTL, what MPLS does it, what it does it, it, it copies the TTL value from layer 3 to MPLS layer. Now where is MPLS layer? MPLS layer is between layer 2 and layer 3. MPLS comes in between. So when a packet arrives, the packet will be forwarded based on MPLS information, not based on layer 3 information. But layer 3 has got the TTL. So what MPLS router does, the router that is enabled with MPLS, it copies the TTL value from MPLS, sorry, from layer 3. Say for example, the packet is coming from CB1 with a TTL value of 64. From CB1, when it comes to PE1, there is no MPLS. So the 64 TTL value will be there in layer 3. But in this router, eGrease router, the router which is responsible for pushing the label, adding the label, the MPLS router, the very first router which is going to push the label. That router, what it will do? It will copy this TTL value from layer 3 to MPLS layer, which is 2.5 layer. Because it is between layer 2 and layer 3, we call it as 2.5 layer. So it copies the TTL value so when it pushes the packet one hop, it becomes 63. Again, becomes 62. Again, becomes 61. Now, when it when it sends the traffic out, it copies the 61 back to layer three, so that you now CB1 will receive with. 60. Because it, here it is 61, when one jump goes, it becomes 60. So still we prevent loop by copying the TTL value from layer 3 down in layer 2.5. So we need some uh, bits for that. We got that bits. So how many? It is 8 bit. So totally we got 32 bit. In the 20 bit is for label. 3 bit is for COS or traffic engineering, 1 bit is for marking bottom of a stack and 8 bit is for TTL. Now, how many labels we will get out of 20 bit? Let's do it. How many bits? 20 bits. So 2 to the power of 20 gives 1048 this many labels because you got 20 bit so in in it you know labels are given to every safe entry every route that is there in the routing table even if it is a very big ISP, you may not see this many routes. 
and again from label number 16 only the labels are assigned label number 16 so 0 to 15 labels are used for internal purpose 0 to 15 labels are not assigned to any updates any uh, route entries they are not assigned to any route entries for any routing for any routes for any entries in Ceph you will not see label 0 to 15 only from 16 onwards till this number you can go and anyway labels we are not going to assign we are not at all going to assign it will be assigned automatically but if you want to manually assign it then you can do it if you leave it as default itself you know it works very good sometime when we do subnetting sorry summarization we may need to do some manual label assignment that is also possible so you can assign labels manually as well as you can have it dynamically assigned so if you see here on a each router let me go to provider one router this is the provider one router that runs MPLS I can show you show MPLS forwarding table I see some labels here for 22 network this is the label for 17 network this is the label 18 network this is the label sorry um, for 10.2 network 17 label for 2222 this is the label for 1111 this is the label so I can see labels for every route let's type the same command on PE1 here I see something additional extra this is VPN see 172.16.100 it's coming from where it is coming from another customer B2 sorry it is coming from B1 customer so you can see that here and you got VPN here means you know those 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 routes are put into VPN they are placed into VPN so that they can go to the other side yep that's what the V here means right it is placed inside the VPN and it also has got a local label and it also has got it, it has got no outgoing label because it is one hop we will talk about that called penultimate hopping pop PHP penultimate hop popping so we don't have a label there here also we don't have label because of same PHP we'll discuss about that in, in shortly sorry this V this is not VPN I'm sorry this is this is VRF right VRF I change it I change my word it is VRF so this is VRF and these are learned through VRF you know on this interface point to point interface and what is the VRF name it is CB so this V is not VPN this V is VRF show MPLS forwarding for VRF CB yeah so that V stands for VRF not VPN all right so labels we didn't assign it is it got assigned dynamically so we are going to understand now how the labels are going to uh, going to serve us in quickening the forwarding decision in making the forwarding decision faster so 
So for that, let me copy the diagram again. All right. Now, then we enable MPLS. There is a protocol gets enabled automatically called LDP. LDP stands for Label Distribution Protocol. Label Distribution Protocol, LDP. See, from the name itself, you can understand the function of it. The job of this protocol is to distribute the labels. It is to distribute the label. So, this router, it, it knows about all the routes in the, in the topology. It knows about 200.1.1.0. It knows about 172.16.0.0. It knows about 22.22.22.22. It knows about 2.2.2.2. It knows about all the networks in the topology. It, it has learned it through some source, maybe OSPF, BGP, EIGRP, RIP, static route, can be of any source. What it does, it, it assigns label to each route, starting from 16, 17, 18, 19. Similarly, every router assigns label to their routes in their routing table or in the Ceph table. They assign label. After assigning the label, this LTP is used to distribute it. So P1, P1 will learn that PE one uses label number 16 for 200.1.1.0 see like like you know up sending routing update here label updates have been distributed between the neighbors why it needs to be distributed why labels need to be distributed so let's take one example for 2222 it's directly connected. The two network is learned here. P2 is learning a label. P2 is assigning a label. That label number is 16. So P2 will, will advertise it. It will say, hey, I'm using label number 16 for 2.2.2.2. Let us say for same 2.2.2.2, P1 has got label number 20. So P1 will say, P1 will say, hey, I'm using label number 20, label number 20 for 2.2.2.2. This guy will say, hey, I'm using label number 30 for 2.2.2.2. So everyone has got label in the route in the routing table, 2.2.2.2. So everyone assigns a label, they distribute it also. Now, according to P1, 2.2.2.2 means what? 20. According to P2, 2.2.2.2 means 16. According to P1, 2.2.2.2 means 30. So now next what happens is, what happens is, This guy says, I'm, I'm having 20 label to everyone. This guy says, I'm having 30 label to everyone, 16 to everyone. Because of this, PE learns that my local label is 30 for 2.2.2.2. My neighbor, my neighbor P1 uses 20 for the same network. Likewise, P1 will have a table saying 2.2.2.2 .2 .2 .2 .2, my local label is 20 
my neighbor PE1 has 30 for the same and my neighbor P2 has label number 16 for that. So here the middle router gets a chance of learning its neighbor's label. Now someone from here wants to go to 2.2.2.2 when the packet enters PE1, PE1 will look into this table. Local is 30, outgoing is 20. Why it is becoming outgoing? Why? Because this has to send the traffic to this guy. So it will, it will put the label given by the neighbor, not its own label. It will not put its own label. It will put label number 20 and send it to this guy so that on seeing label number 20, this, this guy understands that this is for 2.2.2.2. Two 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 two. So what is my outgoing label? My outgoing label is 16. So what it does, it swaps the label. The incoming packet was having label number 30, sorry, label number 20 when it reached P1. P1 what it does, it will see the exit interface according to the routing table, this is the exit interface and the label learned from that interface is from P2 which is 16. So it swaps with label number 16 and sends to this guy. When this guy receives with the label number 16, he understands that it is for 2.2.2.2 then it, it puts the label given by PE2 and sends it down here. And this guy, by looking into the routing table, it will deliver the traffic here. So unless you distribute the label, your neighbor will not know what label to put and send it to you. Labels need to be distributed. For that we have this distribution protocol called LDP, Label Distribution Protocol. There is also another protocol called TDP, Tag Distribution Protocol by Cisco. But this is not default. But both are equally good. The only reason is, this one, this one is not in use, the only reason is, it's a proprietary one. LDP is seen everywhere with every vendor. So this is also default in Cisco. TDP, if you want, you can change. Label protocol, TDP is the command. We will do it later when we get into CLI. So LDP is label distribution protocol, TDP is tag distribution protocol, tag distribution protocol. Basically both do the same thing. They distribute the label. The other difference between these, the one another difference between these two is this uses 646 port number. This uses 711. That's the port number they use. UDP 646 and 711. Initially it will be UDP, later it becomes connection oriented TCP. So 646 and 711 are the port number used by LDP and TDP. This is not layer 3 VPN, this is still layer, sorry, this is not layer 2 VPN, this is still layer 3 only. Here we are not extending layer 2 from left to right. The reason is you remember when we form VPN, when we form VPN between PE1 and PE2, you are using IBGP which is layer 3. Yep, it's still layer 3 VPN, we will talk about layer 2 VPN. Uh, in coming classes where we will be creating a virtual tunnel
correct correct mpl is as well yep hmm Hmm. Right now, that's right. So what what next we are going to understand is let us take only this provider because that that is where we have MPLS. Today we are focusing on MPLS only. So we got provider P P one P two and P three and P P two. Let me show you from P one a table. You just saw the forwarding table. So if you see if you see too much, too many things, you know, you won't we won't fully understand. So let us pick one single network. Two dot two dot two dot two. It's coming from where? It is coming from PE2. It is coming from PE2. So what this router says is for two 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 two, the local label is eighteen. Outgoing label also 18, which means what is outgoing label? The label that you learned from neighbor. That is what outgoing label. Now, can two two router have the same label? Yes, they won't conflict. This guy uses the 18 label. This guy also uses the same 18 label for two dot two dot two dot two network. That is, that doesn't matter. So this router. PE1 when it sends the traffic out it will put the label given by P1 and send to P1 now P1 will look into the table P1 where is P1 here it is P1 will look into the table for 2222 it says local label is 18 that's correct only see local label is 18 only that's correct. That is what you learnt. For this local is eighteen. And uh, next, what it will see is it will see the outgoing label. What is outgoing label? The label given by P two. So according to P two, the label is seventeen. So what what will happen is, when this packet arrives here, it will take the packet. And just simply swap the 18 number with 17 and send it to this guy now on on p2 on p2 show mpls forwarding table this says for true 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 my local label label is 17 that's correct only that's what you know p1 is sending with 17 because it was advertised before so what p2 does is it says you know if anyone sending me a packet with the label number 17 what i need to do i need to just pop the label meaning i need to just remove the label and send the traffic via this interface to this guy who is this guy it is PE2 guy, this fellow. And this is the interface F1 slash 1. This one F1 one slash 1. So now why it is not putting label when it is sending to the last router? Why it's not assigning any label while sending to the last router? See it pops out, pops out the label. What if it, it what if it assigns label? What's what's wrong in assigning label? First of all, there is no label to assign. In case if there is a label, see it puts label number seventeen to send it to R two. Sorry, P two. P one was putting label number seventeen, and it sent to P two. And P two while sending it to PE2, it sends without label. 
no label it has popped it has removed the label out what if i have a label and i assign a label let's say 23 what's the, what's wrong in that i'll tell you what's wrong in that when when pe2 receives the packet it will look into the label okay 23 23 is for 2.2.2.2 .2 .2 .2 .2. But it is not it is not anywhere connected on different router. It is connected directly to me. Two dot two dot two dot two. I didn't learn from anyone else. It is my own directly connected interface. So again, it will look into the adjacency table and the routing table to find the exit interface, which is loopback. It has it has to do two lookups. Route lookup as soon as the label lookup, additional lookups. In order to avoid that, P2 router will remove the label and send it so that it need not to do label lookup. It can directly look into the routing table and deliver the traffic. Similarly, for P1, while sending the traffic to 22, 22, 22, 22, it will remove the label and send. I'll show you. On on P1 router, for 22, it pops the label. It removes the label and sends. So that P2 need not to do two lookups, label lookup and the routing lookup. This is what called as PHP. Pen ultimate hop popping. So this is the ultimate router for 2.2.2.2. .2 .2 .2. So pen ultimate hop means this one. Second last router. That is pen ultimate hop router. What it will do? It will pop the label out and send it to the ultimate router. For 2222, this is the ultimate router and this is the pen ultimate hop. It removes the label and sends. For 11, you will not have a label, outgoing label on PE1. On PE1, you will not have outgoing label for 11. Why? Because that is a PHP router. Whereas for 22 you got a label. For 2 to 2 you got a label. So if your next hop is the owner of the network, you will be popping the label out. So what do we see here? When a traffic enters, When a traffic enters, see the traffic, let's say source is 1.1.1.1. I'm, I'm sourcing from this loop. Destination is 2.2.2.2. What it will do? This router will put a label. It will add label. This is called push operation. Push. Push operation happens on increase router. The router where the MPLS starts. What P router was doing, it was just swapping the label. So swap operation happens on the mid routers. Pop operation, push, swap and pop. Pop operation happens on N minus one the router. That is PHP router, penultimate hop popping router. So three operations we see here, push, swap, and pop. Push happens on the increase, swap happens on the middle, middle routers, and pop happens on the one last router to the egress. One last router to the egress, one before router to the egress router. Pop operation happens. Push, swap, and pop. Whereas for the traffic going from the customer, because they are going through the tunnel, the last label will be removed here, but the top label will be removed here. You got two layers of label, MPLS layers. One for moving the traffic. So 
inside the core to move the traffic that will be removed here and the MPLS label the top label will be removed only here because it is for VPN right now let us do the trace and see from PE1 if I do trace 2.2.2.2 with the source of 1.1.1.1 I should see labels yes right now who gave this label number 18 it was given by PE1 I want to show you that go to PE1 and see what label is there for 2.2.2 the local label is 18 that is why you got 18 there when I trace you got 18 now who gave 17 it was given by P2 we got push swap and pop operations now what we were discussing okay we were tracing the route and we were trying to understand now let us go back again to the trace now this 17 is given by P2 how do I know that let's go and verify P2 not PE2 P2 yeah P2 for 2222 local label is 17 that's the reason we got 17 there and then after that when it was sending to 10.2.0.2 which is the PE2 router the final router P2 was not having any label to put so what P2 was doing it it was it was popping the label that is why we don't have that's why we don't have any labels here we don't have any labels here so MPLS distributes the label so that the neighbor can use that number that label number and talk to us back only then we can understand what the neighbor is coming to say so we we say hey for for uh, uh, for uh, for this network my label is 17 so whenever my neighbor says 17 I know which network he is talking about it's like tagging because your baggage is tagged with a special sticker on it you easily identify your your baggage when it comes in the belt in, you know without opening the traff without opening the baggage though many baggages look identical still you know which one is yours because of the special sticker you only pasted it you know your sticker same way every router assigns label for the networks they know and they distribute to the neighbor as well so that neighbor will use that label and talk to you back when they want to forward the traffic any questions